Hello there guys and gals, the Welsh Hunter here back with yet another 100% achievement guide and this time we are getting it all in the very cool The Plane Effect. This was developed by Studio Kiku, Innovina Interactive, published by P-Cube and is usually available for £12.99 slash $14.99 in the US and goes on sale quite frequently so as usually keep your eye out. So we play as Solo or Slenderman reincarnated by the looks of him without the anger and death and everything as we finish up in an always entertaining office job, because office jobs are always fun, aren't they? Uh, but we go uh, we go to head home, and things are apparent as this is not all it seems, and we have to keep heading through mind-bending mind dystopian city with lots of puzzles and stuff. As for achievements, now, you're going to get a lot for story-related progression. There are a few easy missable ones, but there are four that you have to do and complete the first time around. If you fail, you will have to replay the whole game, or, as I will show you, where to make a backup save, so if you do end up failing, you can just go back to your cloud save as often as you like. There is no chapter select in the game at all, so when I tell you to make a backup save or what to do for an achievement, listen, and listen good. Otherwise, it's a great game that will take around, and again, this is depending on if you can get through the, the uh, few achievements the first time without having to retry between two to three hours. So with that being said, let us begin. Now, as we begin, you can, as you could just see uh, there, there was the game mode, there was normal mode, or there was assisted mode. Assisted mode basically means if you press the left bumper, it'll just tell you where to go next. Um, it's It doesn't affect any achievements or anything, so you might as well pop that on. So if you ever get stuck for whatever particular reason, press the left bumper to see where to go. So as we begin, we're just going to go ahead and pick up our first memory out of five. Um, there are five memories, five photographs in the game. So obviously we need to uh, be keeping an eye out. This is the first one. We won't get the fifth and final one until the very last level. So what we're going to do, you can press the right trigger to run, by the way, but you can see the paper plane on the floor. That is what we're going to head for next. Pick it up. You can press, the, you can jump with the B button. Press A then to pick up the paper plane, and you need to pick it this up three times. This is the first missable achievement, which we will be grabbing. Like I said, because there's no chapter select, you need to... Um, get all of these missable achievements first time around, otherwise you will have a, a, bit of, a bit of a while to go until we get to the next one. Or until you have to replay the game and get to that achievement that you were missing. But anyway, interacting with the paper plane three times will unlock us the light flight achievement. So now we can head towards the door, press the A button here on the door, and it's going to be all like, Bruh, it's too cold man, what the hell? And after interacting with it, you could probably just see the card that fell on the lamp above. So go back to the paper plane, press the A button to give it a little flick, flick dick and dice. And incredibly, it's like 100% accuracy there, the card falls on the floor, which we're going to pick up. Now, when we grab that then, now we can interact with the door, but again, it's going to be like, bruh, it's all snowy and stuff outside, so, uh, yeah, I wouldn't bother. As we can see, eventually, yeah, things happen quite... Some things happen quite quickly in the game, a lot of things happen quite slowly. So from here we're going to head to the left. And we're going to grab our coat, our scarf, and our little briefcase. And we wonder what everyone else has gone. It's the dystopian future, baby. Everybody's dead. Unfortunately. So anyway, now we've got our coat and scarf on. Now we can head through the door. And that's the end of that chapter. So that is level one of the office complete already. That's always nice. But there will be, uh, in between each level, there's normally like a sort of minute or two cutscene, so... You know, enjoy, enjoy Slenderman in all his glory. He give up the days of murdering people and chasing pe people scarily in the woods. He, he decided to come up with a 9 till 5 office job and be depressed for the rest of his life. <laughs> well, that's always nice. <laughs>
So here we go, on to level 2, the tube, and we will get the office achievement as well for completing the office. Now when you think of the tube, you normally think of London and Tokyo and Russia and things like that. <laughs> so you go from an office job onto a crammed tube where everyone, you know, is basically inside you. That's, uh, that's not living really, is it? Anyway, we're going to head to the left and down the stairs here. We're going to get another missable achievement for kicking the soda can. Here is the soda can. Make sure to um, walk into it, kick it off the rails. That'll get you the kickoff achievement. And we can head and interact with this sort of lever right here, just where the can was. So interact with that, and he's going to go, uh, uh. Um, We're going to head down, and we're actually going to go onto the track, picking up these gloves. Now, a lot of the time in the game, as you will see here, you're supposed to wait until the red stops, and then you can climb up. But I get electrocuted. Now, a lot of the time in the game, if you do die, you will pretty much start a little bit before. So, as you can see, I start just above the... Uh, on the platform with the gloves already being picked up so uh, that happens quite a lot luckily so now we can head all the way sort of up and to the right and we're going to interact with this electric electronic hootany switch to fix that head back down go to the left past the first lever that we interacted with and interact with this vending machine here in the back bye 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 sell 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 that's my motto make sure to grab the coin as well because we're going to need that it poof, it poofed right into your poof kit. Poof kit. Interact with the same lever we did earlier on. That will finally get us going. By the way, a lot of things won't happen until you interact with a certain item. So if you think that something seems pointless, it's actually not. You've got to interact with something first and then, you know, go from there. So thank you for that. Train McDouchebag. No wonder you're on strike all the time. So interact with this button here, that will pop the uh, vent going, and that'll pop us up our ticket. I'm just joking. Mo mo I'm, I'm with uh, everyone striking for more pay. Since, of course, as I've said in so many videos, the British government like to bend its citizens over, completely dry, and have a whole tube of Pringles up there. Ouch, that hurts. And Pringles are only for eating, not for shoving up your butt and stuff. So anyway, that is the end of the tube. Uh... <laughs> The tube of the tube of Pringles. Uh, no, so I'm, so, I'm, so, I'm so sorry. But no, that is the end of the second level and the tube. That will get us the tube achievement. And now here we are at all of the lights, all of the lights. Whoa, whoa. City lights, right. What are you going to see then? As we begin, we can just start heading up. So as soon as we can regain control, control character of Slenderman, we're going to head up. Now what's going to happen is, as you're going to see, when the traffic light changes, so do the red. So you actually have to wait until the red goes to the opposite side to move forward. But anyway, we're going to interact with this phone box right here. The coin comes out. And I'm actually going to die here, which is absolutely fine. So what you, obviously, because I'm in the middle of the road, we're going to get shot by a drone. But again, because we picked up the item, that's fine. And we literally just start exactly where we were um, with the coin in hand. So that the checkpoints of this game are very, very good, at least. They could have put a bit of chapter select in for us, but there we go. So heading up onto the right, keep going, keep going straight past the mushroom-looking trees. And we're just going to go across the zebra crossing here, where the taxi rank is, and interact with this phone box. Bye bye bye! Sell, sell, sell! Sell me your dreams, as the taxi comes by. And for some reason, all taxis do this, don't they? When you get into a taxi, they immediately, they get to you speedy as hell, but then when you're in the car with them, they drive at 25 miles per hour, slash 30 miles an hour, and cite it as safety reasons when all we know is they've got that stupid little crappy counter where the price goes up consistently and then they rip you a new one. I suppose if you've got the power of being a taxi driver then uh, you're gonna do it aren't you? Anyway, uh, head up 
here to oh, <laughs> try not to get run over if you can help it and then head to the right anyway when we're across the road we're gonna head up the ladder oh, head up the ladder head up these stairs sorry that'll do it now don't get too close because there is a drone that can kill you dead but there's gonna be a bird on the right hand side here just on top of the lamppost which we're just gonna get a bit closer I'm sorry god damn it anyway when somebody or something gets zapped, the bird will end up right by the taxi rank by the new stand. So we'll just, uh, you know, we'll, we'll avoid getting zapped again. So let us head down these stairs. We're going to have to wait, of course, until the red wall bags off to the other side. Bim, 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 bim. Oh, see, that could be a sound guy, too. Right, head across the road. Wait again until the red wall. I would say that's the red wall, Manchester United's defence, but after the uh, game against Manchester City yesterday, where we lost 6-3, well, it's not a red wall anymore, is it? It's more of a leaking colander, that Man United defence. Anyway, by the new stand, pick up this <laughs> newspaper, and that'll throw it at the bird, that'll put him on top of the new stand. That's fine, because that'll uh, smash it down, and somehow, that'll explode the taxi. Don't ask me how that happened, but it's happened, and what that's done is actually gotten rid of the drone for us. Uh, so, now we can just head across the road, and, and to the left across the road again. See, lots of little puzzles, which, there were no hints in this game either, in terms of puzzles, so, if you're playing on your own, it does sort of just chuck you straight in, which is, uh, hey, which isn't necessarily bad, everyone loves a challenge, as we head back up the stairs here. But yeah, sometimes it can get a little frustrating if it just doesn't seem obvious what to do. So now we can head through the game. Now what's going to happen, there's going to be five of these that happen. Uh, sort of through glitched doors, where you come into sort of a, a, a mini level, if you will. And you've just got to figure out a puzzle in this mini level to carry on. So what we're going to do is head uh, basically to the back left corner of this room until you find the paper plane. And you shove that. Uh, it's a big paper plane and you've got only small slender man pockets. I don't know where that is. Uh, but that's all we're doing for this particular quote-unquote mini-level. So we can just head back through the door, and the glitched with one exclamation mark will appear. Oh, will unlock, sorry. So glitched, exclamation mark, that will unlock, and that is good. So now we can go ahead and finish the level. So head, just head straight back through the door, and that is what will end the level. Go on, Slender Man Boy. Oh, by the way, so I'm so sorry, we're 13 minutes in. I forgot to say, it's the right trigger to um, run. I would say sprint, but he kind of does a, you know, a jog like he's crapped his pants slightly. So it's kind of a kind of a crap pantingly jog, if you want to call it that. Uh, yes, but it is the right trigger anyway, if you want to move a little bit further, a little bit f faster. Right, this is another short level, but the first thing that we're going to do is absolutely nothing. So as soon as we begin, we're just going to stand still until the snowman achievement unlocks. This is going to take around 20 to 30 seconds, but we are going to... Ah, you son of a... Anyway, we will chase him in just a bit. So we are going to freeze our nutbags off and die, pretty much. Uh, so just keep waiting here until the snowman achievement unlocks. Like I said, it'll take around 20 to 30 seconds to unlock. And one movement of your leg e e e <laughs> equals instantaneous death. So, what we're going to do, we can't stand still for too long, but all we've got to do is actually just follow the bird. So, immediately, when this little cheeky bar stool of a bird grabs our scarf, you can't run, you can only walk, so we're going to head to the right, or pretty much straight, sorry. So, keep going straight. You have to sort of walk into the bird for him to uh, knob off. Go slightly left here, and he is on top of this kind of looks like a rocket or something, unless I'm just being extremely blind. Oh, it's a phone box, yes. No, it's not a rocket. <laughs> Go right into the tree. That'll be the next one. Keep heading up. And you're going to see him... Uh, you know, it's pretty straightforward, this level. You just can't stand around for too long, that's all. Um, so just past the flashing car. He's directly in front of us now. There he is, so smash him up. And then you're going to go to the right from here. So past the bus. And it's actually after this level is where we're going to start getting into the really weird and creepy stuff. So there's the bird again, just in, just on top of the stop sign. 
and then eventually, there he goes. So, what he's done then is drop the scarf right in the middle of the wet snow. And you put it on going, oh, I'm really warm, even though he's just made it extremely cold. So, anyway, that one's all done. So, now we're just going to head straight up a little bit and start heading to the right. So, sort of upright, right up. And going to see what is supposedly supposed to be your wife, who sort of floats away in ghostly form. So, is wife alive? Is wife dead? Oh, well... Let's get through this weird dystopian city first. Head into uh, the bits of wispy gold, and job done for this level. Now the levels from now on are starting, they're gonna start getting to about 10, 12, 15 minutes to completio. I got eaten! Eaten by a... thing! What looked like a whale or something. Well, I suppose if we're in a wormhole, it's pretty much a worm, right? Right, so now we are inside the beast of the worm. You can see the teeth. Pretty much they're probably big enough there to just nip through, but uh, we're not gonna do that. We're gonna carry on. Now what you're gonna have to do then is um, jump up again with the B button. Now the jumping in this game did cause a couple of headaches for me. It's a bit weird how he sort of jumps. Um, jumps like a bit of a donkey, to be honest. Uh, sometimes it works, sometimes it does. But anyway, you have to make sure to pick up this sort of golden raspberry wisp or whatever it is. Now, make sure to get close to every car so that the car alarms um, go off like so. Um, we're going through the giant worms. <laughs> it looks like a butthole in his stomach. But to get the achievement here, battery charger, we have to go through um, and interact with, well, just go close to every bus and every car so that all the alarms are going off. So that should be one, that should be three cars on a bus so far into this next area. Again, just um, wait until the, uh, we can go through this bit, this, uh, this is fine. Just make sure to stay close to the bus, then uh, close to the car. So that again, all the alarms are going off and we're going to go through the next piece of deliciousness that is worm, a worm burrito. Welcome to McDonald's. Gives you <laughs> gives you some good worms and some good poops, but the food is delicious. So, well, you you, you take some good with a bad, don't you? That's it. So anyway, uh, head straight on and go near this next car, of course, to get that car alarm going. And that should be the last one then, which will get you the battery charger achievement. So if you don't have the battery chargement achievement yet, just go back um, because it'll mean that you've missed one car or one bus that you didn't set its alarm off so but anyway heading forward what you're going to need to do is interact with this car because again you have to interact with it in order for the story to progress otherwise it won't progress <gasps> so when you do that we can't obviously go into the next pool because it's full of electric in. Uh, but just head back and then we are going to interact with this one little yellow wire whatever it's called that's going to drop this car down and this is a big worm. This is very SpongeBob SquarePants worm. You know, we chase SpongeBob and Sandy through the. Or am I just sad? It's because I watched it with my kids, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Anyway, make sure to pick up the battery there by interacting with the car twice, and then we can run all the way forward again into the next part. So interacting with this car again, interact with it twice, and that's going to uh, turn on the lights, and that's going to get the red angry electroconocutionings. Done. There is a dead body in there, which, well, he didn't think to have a look at the car battery, did he? So keep going forward, ignoring the hammer for now. We will come back to the hammer in just a bit. Again, we have to interact with the next thing, which is going to be directly in front of us. And it is just the switch right there. So interact with the switch and he's going to go... Because <clears throat> that's the only word that he can say rather than, holy crap, where am I? He just says <clears throat> throughout the entire game. 
So we can head back down. We're going to interact with the hammer that we uh, seen just now. There it is. And what he's going to do is throw it square into the car. Smash those. And that will get that bit of electric electrocutioning down. And the strings or the wires, whatever you want to call it. But that does open up the path for us to keep going straight on. So now we can interact with the button. Of course, make sure to interact with the button before. But like I said, if you die anyway, you will literally just start off where exactly you were. So in terms of that, that's one good point for the game anyway. So keep going straight. And now this is kind of like a traffic light puzzle. So what you're supposed to do, hit the button once. And when the top left one goes to green, then hit the button again. So hit the neck, hit the button now as it goes green. And it'll be the same for the second one. So wait until it goes red and then until it goes green again. So once it goes green, hit the button again. And again, wait for, the, wait for it to go green on the third traffic light type thing here. There it goes. Hit it again. And of course, do the same with the last one. If you manage to hit the button while it's red, it'll just reset the puzzle. But that is a pretty easy one when you know what you're doing. Otherwise, again, because there's no hints or anything, it can be a bit confusing. But wait until they're all green and we're good to go. So once again then, moving forward. And this is just like a timed bit of section. So as soon as they're at the very top, just keep running and jumping if you want. I just made that. Same with this one. It's just another timed section. So as soon as it's at the very top, head out, head in, head gone. Head gone like a Pringles can up the butt. Uh, again, wait until the electric conicusity. <laughs> I know it. I know it's called electricity. Ah, Jesus Christ! Just made that. I know it's called electricity, but uh, for some reason, since a young boy, I, I always called it electric conicution. So that's what I'm sticking with. So we are picking up this instrument here. I think that was a saxophone or some kind of phone. And then we're going to keep going straight. So it goes from uh, electricity and all that jazz to musical instruments. As we we're going to interact with the car again. Oh, sorry, a saxophone. It was a bat, of course, because we're not at the, um, the instrument section yet, of course. So <laughs> when, once you've interacted with that, uh, this little scene will happen. And then we can lovingly move on. So the whole uh, wormhole opens up for us, that's good. So it's just straight for now, straight through the acid, acid-infused stuff. He's got this worm is a long, long worm, I tell you what. And somehow we're going to start flying. So all you got to do for this bit then is just avoid the red cubes. And you'll be fan, just fan. That's fan. And now we are coming into music instrument territory. I don't know how it decided, a worm decided to eat just a quartet of band members or whatever, but uh, here we go. So what we're going to do then, head into the sort of middle of it right here. Everything is just going to explode. We're going to grab this little, uh, you know, ting thing. I uh, forget what the ting thing is called, right from the sort of upper leaf or whatever. Then we can interact here with the now, uh, 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 uh. Not a saxophone? No, that's a trumpet. No, trumpet. Why am I so dumb? Interact with the trumpet. 
Uh, move away, because they do explode. I'm not sure if it actually harms you, but just in case. And then you can pick up L Trumper L Trumpet Aroni. So, uh, head into the middle, and you're automatically going to put it down, and you're going to start going. I know, I know, my trumpet noise was incredible, I know. So, what you're going to do now is start heading up the stairway. Now, just note, it is very easy to fall off here, so take your time and be careful, because even though you don't take any fall damage, it's just a bit of a pain in the ass when you fall from, you know, quite a way up, and you've got to go again. So, uh, just keep running up anyway. Try not to fall again. Like I said, don't run if you don't want to. If you think that it's too, um, if you think you keep falling or whatever, just walk up, that's fine. It's not a race, it's a marathon. Or whichever one it is. So, uh, be careful here with the rocks. Again, you can fall down. So, just jump your way across, down and then across. Lovely, until we get to this one, which... If my eyes will allow me to see, it is a... a flute. Looks flutish. Yeah, 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 it's a flute. Right. Pick it up. Walk forward ever so slightly for an automatic scene where the heart gets annihilated. That's a, uh, another good flute noise. Uh, but the heart does not get annihilated. What it does is open up the valve or whatever that is. And we can get sucked off. Uh, up. Sucked up. Not sucked off, sucked up. There we go. So, from this bit, obviously, we're just going to keep heading up. By the way, we are coming up to uh, the first achievement where we have to get it right the first time. But this one is the very, very easy one. So, again, when we get there, I'll obviously let you know. Just follow my instructions and we're all good. But for now, um, we're just heading up. And this is, very, this is very scientific as well. This is what the inside of a worm looks like, apparently. It's got a bunch of cars and... Oh, stupid son of a... Yeah... It's got a bunch of cars in it and some uh, musical instruments as well. Worm's been on a rampage. This is 100% scientifically accurate, apparently. So again, be careful when you're going up there. As you can see, I fell. Fell like an absolute dong bag. Now, that is not the, the little piece of paper that we've just gone past. We're going to ting this open to, to get the next musical instrument. And then we can go and pick up the piece of paper. Now, note this is not a collectible memory for the um, five times good achievement. This is what we need for, if, if you're wanting to know, this is the puzzle, the solve, the puzzle to solve the golden ratio achievement. So that, that's exactly what that is, just in case you were wondering there, and just in case you were wondering how I know these things. So after you pick that one up, or pick up that next musical instrument, you're gonna start playing it again, whacking that out and being all like, yeah, yeah. But this is the start of the Golden Ratio achievement, and you have to get this right the first time. So, if 1 to 5 is from left to right, we're going to go into the very left one first, which is number 1, and press the A button to go in. So remember, you have to get this right first time. This next one is the very left one again, which again is number 1. So like I said, from left to right is 1 to 5, so you go in number 1. And again, press the A button to go in, because uh, otherwise you're not going in and, you know... Apparently, this worm likes it when you go into five of its holes. Delicious. Right, next is number two. That's one, one, two so far. And next one is going to be number three. So, of course, it'll be right in the middle. Number three. Or if you're Spanish, El Trio. That's about as good as my Spanish gets again. And the last one is number five. So, on the very right hand side. A, there we go, so that you press the A button. You can't really get it wrong unless you keep spamming the A button for some particular reason. But that is the golden ratio achievement. So that is the first out of four, which we have to get right the first time. Uh, that's why I don't actually make, I didn't actually make a backup save there because it was easy enough. But the next one in just a moment, in about f three or four minutes, uh, that this is where I am going to make a backup save. So after we ting, this and get the next instrument. You're going to walk forward ever so slightly and then it's going to be a mega musical quartet of pure devotion and pure fantastic niz niz niz. Phantasmagoria.
So, Slenderman give up his life of violent crime and chasing people in the woods to crawl through a worm and be a musical solo legend. Anyway, interact with the second hole first to slam the trumpet in. Then it's the third one to stick. Now, it, it kind of looks like an ominous uh, sign there with one stick up and two things by the side of it. Then in the first one, and then the fourth one. Uh, I, I'm pretty sure that is the order. I don't think that's randomized. I, I'm pretty sure that is the order that you're supposed to do it in. Then interact with the sheet music again. And it's going to start going nuts. What is that? The third one with a stick pointing up and two things at the bottom of its base. Hmm. Right, so here we are then at the first point where you can miss the achievement if you don't get it right first time. So, what you need to do then to make up the back, to, we're going to make a backup right now, just in case. Now, it is definitely, definitely worth doing. So, what we need to do is quit out, completely quit out of the game here, so that the game it effectively saves to the cloud. So, what you then need to do, if you end up messing it up and you don't get the achievement first time, um, what you have to do then is, when the game is open, press the dashboard button, then select the game and press the start, the, the three lines button, select manage game and add-ons, then select save data and click delete all. Okay, now that what, what that will do, will it'll close the game and then when you select it again, it'll download your clo cloud save so you start from that point again. So, th there's no chat to select like I said, and there is no chance of you... Um, dashboarding out and then going in again because it might have already put you further on like I said earlier if you die or whatever it just puts you in the same spot so like I said put it step by step again then completely quit out like we have done and then if you do mess up uh, if you do mess up with the game open press the dashboard button select the game press the start button the one with the three lines select manage game and add-ons select save data and click delete all which should be at the very top that way it just deletes your local save and not the cloud save okay so that uh, that is again just in case you mess up uh because his uh skateboard in here is a bit and it can be a bit strange and like i said if you do mess up the cloud save will put you exactly where we just backed it up so for right from here so what you need to do then, you need to tickle its sphincter now. So as soon as he starts screaming, then you need to press the A button. So press the A button now to kick it when it's, uh, you need to sort of, vote again, you need to tickle the sphincter, as it were. So as soon as he screams again and the, and the screen starts vibrating, roar, he wants you to get straight, in, <laughs> straight through him like a knife through butter. And you'll only need to do this one more time. So as soon as he screams, Stick your head straight in the sphincter bags, and that'll open that up. And now, th now there is one point. So what it's trying to tell you to do, so to get the achievement, you basically have to not get hit by any of the tentacles at all. And they come from, obviously, the left and the right. Now, there is one point that I found that worked each time, and that is by staying on the right of the water's edge. So not going over the water's edge, but staying on the right. But it can be a little bit tricky to sort of, um, to control. So just try and stay as far right onto the water's edge as possible. And with that, you will avoid then all of the tentacles. So if, again, try not to go over too much to the right, because you can get hit by one of the tentacles, but staying exactly where I am. It's not too long, it's only about 30 seconds or so, but it's very easy to get knocked off first. But there we go, that's how you do that then. That's how you get the Expert Server Achievement. And like I said, you have to do that the very, very first time. If you ended up messing up again, like I told you to do, um, go back and uh, go back into your backup save and try it again. So, uh, well, there we go. It's um, yeah, it's never nice when you've got that extra pressure to get an achievement, is it? That's the one thing that does my head in when there's no chapter selected in the game. Is that extra pressure of getting it right first time. <laughs> it's a pain in the butt snatch. But anyway, um, you will get the Expert Surfer achievement now, just after the Wormhole one unlocked. So don't worry if it didn't unlock yet. So here we are, home sweet home. We're going to head down past this sort of kitchen area. And we're going to interact with this little switch on the wall here. 
So again, hopefully you got that either first time or you got that with not too many issues. Now we can carry on. So we just picked up that item. We're going to go to the right, past the art weasel. No, um, Wangel. No, what's it? Whatever it's called. Pick up the blue light bulb anyway. Easel. Sorry, not weasel. Eh, close enough. So head back to the left after you've got the thing on the wall, the thermometer or whatever on the wall, thermostat and the blue light bulb. Heading back past the kitchen area into this sort of living room area, if you want to call it that, and then press the A button here to pick up the next memory. So that will be memory two out of five. In terms of memories, like I said earlier, it's only photographs we have to pick up. So if we pick up anything uh, like pieces of paper that has instructions on it, as we just sit down here, um, that is just for a puzzle rather than a memory collectible. So after we have sat down, some more spooky stuff's gonna happen. I tell you, you've already had a crap 9 till 5 day. You just wanted to catch a train home, not go through worms' buttholes and stuff. So now go into the kitchen area itself. Interact with the uh, item on the floor. And that's going to do some stuff. In fact, it was tape. Duct tape on the wall. That's what we got earlier, not a thermostat. Dopey butt snatch as I am. Uh, interact with the lamp there. Put the blue light thing on and <laughs> take a seat again. The blue lampshade. Can you tell my English is just on peak point as usual this morning? Yes. <laughs> so when we've sat down anyway, um, we are going to get a little scene right here. Ooh, all spooky red. And then we're going to go to that wall. We're going to interact with it again by pressing the A button. Nah, nah. It's a secret passageway, but we can't go through there yet. So after interacting with the wall, head to the left past the living room area and interact with this valve. So that the steam will stop. You can stop being El Steamo. Oh, in fact, we break it. Okay. Right, another missable achievement coming up here. And it is literally for just knocking down all the dominoes, all the mannequins. They are mannequins, not dominoes. What we need to do first is go into this sort of middle area. And about the third row in, we need to interact with to get the sort of head domino, if you want to call it that. So all you got to do now is literally just knock every single one down until the domino master unlocks. Now, when I seen Domino Master, I immediately thought of pizza like the big fat ass that I am. Uh, but no, we are just knocking every single mannequin down. Um, sometimes if you knock too many down, it can be kind of hard to sort of jump over them. So if you can, just go from the very front one and just push him down, i.e. the domino effect, so that they all just go backwards. If not, don't worry, just keep going. Y you'll, you'll be fine. Just knock them all down. Go on, boys. Go on. And there she blows then. Domino Master Achievement, our first rare achievement, which is nice. So, down the bottom left corner here, we are literally just picking up the item off the floor, covered in a pool of blood, which is very not ominous at all. At all. And then we can head through this little hatch here, the yellow and black hatch we're going to head through. Remember to uh, just unlock uh, the Domino Master Achievement before doing this. Otherwise, like I said, you will have to replay the whole game again up until this point. So like I said, there are a lot of missable achievements. But they are very easy. It's the ones like the Expert Surfer one, which can be a butt snatch. And that's the only point that I make a backup save. So, out of here, we've just gone to the secret wall, which we can now interact with because we've got the hammer. And Slenderman is so incredible here, he does it one-handed as well, still with a briefcase in hand. Uh, but we interact with the lever anyway, and that will open up the coitons. The coitons. Or coitus. Why do old people called call sex coitus? Oh, are you caught in? No, I'm not playing football on a football court. Well, what? 
What is courting? Uh, anyway, just going off my old man rants there, we're going to head to the bottom right. We're going through the same curtains now. Interact with this switch. And we can't actually go through the doors behind said curtains yet. There is our daughter who just wants to play uh, paper airplane. So let's go and do that, shall we? Interact here, of course, with the switch. That's going to open up the doors. And we're going to be like, ah, oh, hey, you floated away. Well, that's got to be depressing for this guy. So anyway, head around. We're going to see the um, fishing rod that we are going to grab in just a moment. But we need to head onto the board. Be careful not to fall in. Uh, just grab the keys. But of course, for some reason, he can't actually pick them up. He has to um, shove them off for some particular reason. So we need to go and get the magnet now. So back into the house. We need to go and find the magnet. So head down. Basically sort of following the um, footsteps, as it were. Back where we got the duct tape earlier. Through this wall. All the way down, and on this fridge is where the magnet is, right by the kitchen area. So, with that, we can just head back outside now. And that's why we didn't pick up the fishing rod earlier, because we're going to do that right now. Um, yeah, and this will happen a lot in the game as well, where random silly things just to add a couple more minutes to the game, as in, he drops something when he could have quite easily picked them up, or, you know, something like that, but... Hey, still, it's not too bad. What are we, 40 minutes in? Yes, we are flying. So after picking up the fishing rod, we now have the rod and magnet combo. The deadliest combo ever. Apart from Erling Haaland and Kevin De Bruyne. Sorry, more football more football talk. Sorry, sorry. We're going to sit down and we're going to go fishing for Blinky, the three-eyed fish in the radioactive waters. Still tastes delicious, so we'll give that. Except we don't, and we've only got a set of keys. Well, that's fine, because we need these keys to progress the story. So, Blinky, you little son of a monkey butt, we will come back for you later. Although apparently this Slender Man doesn't eat anything. Skinny git. Anyway, once we've done this area, we have never no need to come back, so we're going to head down now. And we are going to go through the door this time that we can, because we've got the keys. Makes sense, keys fit into door, well, now we can go through locked door. Doesn't make all the sense, doesn't it? Although he does it very slowly, we don't actually get to see the bedroom. Oh, in fact, no, we do, because we've got to uh, kick this pillow over, like a hard man that we are, and we can interact with whatever it is on the bed, the pair of scissors. Sorry, I thought this was another glitched mini level right there, but it's not. So heading down and sort of to the right, uh, what we're going to do is uh, interact with and cut the tape. Which again, you could have easily gone through, but that's not happening. We need, we specifically needed the scissors. Right, now we need to put in a combination. Now, what you have to do is basically, to solve the puzzle, you have to go from the, from the bigger circles right here to the smallest. So, uh, I'll just tell you what it is. It is three, five, four, two, and one. So, three, five, three. 4, 2, 1, that's how you solve that puzzle. But like I said, if you wanted to know, the cards with the, um, uh, you know, uh, the crime scene looking thing right there, you had to go in the order from from biggest circle to smallest. And that puzzle would be a sort of recurring theme throughout the game as well. Which is kind of clever when you think about it. Anyway, we've just picked up what we needed to pick up from the safe. Now we can go directly up. And now we're going to go through this door, which will actually give us the start of the next glitched mini-level. Eventually. Can be kind of finicky, to be honest, sometimes. And here we are then. So, now these levels are not normally too bad. Uh, you, uh, We need to pick up the umbrella here. Now, in these levels, you can die a lot. But like I said earlier, there's no checkpoint or anything. You literally just start off from where you died, so it's kind of handy. So head up, and then we're just going to go all the way down to the left. Uh, it may be a little bit tricky to see, but don't worry about that. We are literally just heading left until we end up getting to the road. Hey, son of a git. Right, there it is. So, of course, what we need to do is cross the road, but cross the road carefully. Um, you can stand in the middle of the road as well, because the cars won't hit you in the middle of the road if needed. As you can see, I almost get um, run over. And at the very edge as well. Uh, over to the next one again. Of course, it's just like from the second level. Ooh, hoo, hoo. S literally shaving my butt right there. Right, and now we've got to cross the train tracks without die. <laughs> well, I don't say without dying, but you know, try not to die. It's a, again, it's a bit of a minor inconvenience if you die. 
So you can stay right in the middle here so you don't have to rush across, which is always nice. Just nice. Heading down, you can see the gap in the fence here straight in front of us now. So just go ahead. Oh, God. My ass is being shaved incredibly so. Don't need a razor, apparently. And we're just going to keep going. You know, pretty much to the left as it is until you see this red lampshade. Pick up the paper plane. And now what we've got to do then is just start making our way back. So it's exactly the same thing then as we've done here. You just need to wait wait until the train go stay in the middle then go over to the next one until we get right back to the very end so you literally just go in straight without trying to die easy And here we are then, right back at the start. Now we can interact with the door. And that is going to get us the glitched exclamation mark, exclamation mark. So it's two exclamation marks this time. Interact with the same door here to basically end the level as well. So you'll get the glitched exclamation mark, exclamation mark achievement and the home sweet home achievement. And now we're going to start the next level called the car and the spiders from Mars. And, oh, it's that time again. It's time to get another miscellaneous achievement. So, what the game is going to want you to do is drive. But what we're going to not do is drive. So, <laughs> when we start here, what we're going to do is just basically keep walking. So, ignore the cars. Ignore the all uh, apparitions that appear to haunt your face. And just keep walking. Basically, what's going to happen is UFO is going to come here. Yeah. He's going to probe us, and then he's going to come again, and then we'll get sent back to the beginning of the game. I'm, I'm awfully sorry. It's just so easy sometimes. Whatever you're planning on doing with me, Make it quick, I'll try anything 17 times before I'll decide if I like it or not. Ooh, slippery. Right, anyway, now we can finally get into the car. We basically started the car, so now what's going to happen is for this level, it's basically a driving section for a couple of minutes, do something else, driving section for a minute or two, do something else. So that's exactly what you're going to do. And just like any, th any driving game ever, right trigger to move, left tr uh, stick to steer, left trigger to reverse if needed um now just be careful of course my driving is just atrocious somehow i've still got a delivery job going as well with my driving in games uh, you can slip on oil and stuff like that so just be wary be a little careful but literally nothing's gonna happen until we stop oh man i i i suck I, i'm the suckiest suck that ever sucked but I've still got a delivery job, so ah, must be doing something right. This big Welsh smile, isn't it? Yeah.
Okay, only three crashes then. That wasn't too bad. Four, if you include scraping across the barriers. Right, anyway, when we get out, oh, this will automatically happen, of course. We're going to head down first, and we are going to pick up this sheet of paper. And what it's going to tell you to do is things to, to do. So, well, let's get, go ahead and do those things, for Fajudun. So from here, what we're going to do is head sort of up and right. So basically straight forward and we can see the oil barrel already. So give that a little kick. And again, Slenderman's got some incredible strength. There's one kick and a full barrel of oil gets swept away like nothing. Head back down and you're going to see like a hose or a tube on the floor. We're going to pick that up as well. And then from here, we're going to just go left. So that's the only two items that we needed from this bit. Go straight across the road. And we're going to interact with this broken little bit of wood. So you can only interact with it once. Uh, I did try being massive and interact with it again, but uh, looks like my steroid strength, my Slenderman steroid strength, sort of ran out. So go behind it, go past these sort of mushroom trees, whatever the hell they're supposed to be. And on the left, we're going to see a uh, transponder. Yeah, one of those things. So interact with that. Put the, <laughs> put the plug in. And that's going to explode the sign like an absolute king, man. King blood. So that is all good for now. So what we're going to do is head back down. We're not going to go into the car yet. We just need to do one more inty, teensy, beansy little thing. And with the lamppost you've just seen, something breaking on there. Go to the opposite side and you're going to see this lamppost with the broken elastic. So interact with that. That's going to make the elastic full again somehow. I don't know how, but we've managed to do that. And that's that. So, once we get over, we're going to fling reverse. Again, the law of physics uh, comes into effect incredibly here. Works like a charm. No problem. So, we've got another little, little, tiny, tiny, teensy, weensy driving section to get through. So that ends the petrol run, so we need some more petrol now. Right, so we're going to head to the left, though the sort of opposite side of the road. Now, there's going to be one sort of creature. As soon as you see the creature, start running towards the opposite side. So don't go back to him. Oh my god, I can feel him. I can feel him on my ass, man. Uh, head through the barriers right here. They can't catch you. They're not faster than you, so don't worry about that. Just keep your finger on the right trigger. Head to the left as we get past the oil sign. And eventually they will bag her off, which is always tidy. Um, now I never got caught, but I assume death by them is not pretty. Is pretty much not fun. So we're gonna head, keep heading straight. I'm uh, not gonna interact with the levers for now, but we are gonna pick up this lever that is just randomly chilling on the ground. There we go. Now we're gonna head to the left. So pass old uh, Marge Simpson cactus haircut, pass the three pipes and dripping oil, and head up here. We are going to go through the fence, or through the gated fence area, and directly in front of us then, there should be a, a switch without a lever in it. So that is what we're going to do. So interact with it twice, for once to put it in, and once to actually turn the son of a monkey. And that's going to get that going. Right, head back down through the gated fence area. We're going to go back through the fence, uh, through the uh, pipes, sorry, or past the pipes. And now we're going to interact with the three levers from earlier on. There we go. So what we're going to do first is interact with the middle one. So make sure to interact with the middle lever first. Then the one on the technically the right-hand side. Then interact with the one on the left. And then finally interact with the one on the right-hand side again. So it's middle, right, left, right. Middle, right, left, right. And then that's going to get us another scene, and it's going to start getting the oil for us. 
even though it's supposed to be petrol, because if you run out of uh, f oil in a car, then that's going to go explodey, explodey engine bags. Uh, so, <laughs> anyway, what we need to do, go to this area here with the sort of petrol pump, pick up the petrol um, uh, skinny medigator, put it down directly in front of the petrol majigger. Again, that's my English going <laughs> right out of <laughs> right out of harm's way. Uh, interact here with the funnel, the opposite side, or sort of just in front of us, and then go back and interact that with the petrol can. Oh, petrol can! There we go. I managed to get my words eventually. So we interact that with the petrol can, and then we can interact with the petrol pump. Oof! See, it's all coming back to me now. Um, and then that's going to give us some petrol, or some oil apparently, or whatever. I, it, it, it's petrol. We ran out of petrol. Okay, we didn't run out of oil. So pick it up. You can't actually run with this bit, but there is going to be one giant boy that just wants to. Well, he wants to be inside us, and that ain't happening because dude is giant. Dude is giant. So keep heading back down. So what we're going to need to do when the cutscene ends with the big giant bug or whatever the hell it is, we need to go back to that same area that we just were with the garage and the petrol pumps. This time, funnily enough, we can run. So, as soon as the scene ends and we can regain controller of Slenderman, turn around and run the hell out of it. Run, run, as fast as you can. You ain't getting inside me. You can stick it up your own nan. Uh, but there we go. So, we automatically, we only have to run a little bit. And somehow, he can't just get underneath and stab us for whatever particular reason with his big meaty claws. That comes in handy for us to live. So... To where we found the first petrol pump, we're going to find the cigarette, which has just come out of literally nowhere. Then go to the big oil spill. Simply light that up, and that is how uh, the fire lights, and for whatever reason, he stays there and doesn't actually jump over and try to kill us. So, well, again, it makes it bloody easier for us, doesn't it? So, we can just head back down now to the oil. I mean, again, you can go slow if you want. There's really no need, but uh, I don't. I'm pretty sure he doesn't chase you, so don't worry about that. So we can just head back down. Remember, of course, to pick up the oil can again, and then interact the oil can with your car, and off you drive like a big beehive. Right, that's the end of giant bugs trying to kill us or something. We have now come up to this little area, this big building. So, of course, all we're going to do is go straight and head for the door. And we are going to start our third glitched mini level. Glitched exclamation mark, exclamation mark, exclamation mark. 
So this will be the third one. And this isn't too bad, but there are a lot of steps that you can easily fall off to contend with. So be aware, I kept falling off and getting pissed off in the end. So just go around the big giant fan, interact with this big anvil. Oh, look at me, I knew something. Instead of going, um, and then saying the wrong thing. Um, after this, <laughs> we can now start heading up the steps. Now again, uh, you can run up if you want, but I highly advise just walking up to be honest, because as you can see, uh, and that's not the only time I fell, by the way. I fell a lot and got annoyed with it at the end. From here, go left. And then, of course, we're going right. And then we're going up the steps to the left. And then sort of back, sort of back on ourselves. We're still going up. From here, we're going right. This is where I kept falling, by the way. That's why I'm going extremely slow at this point. And obviously, go up again. And we're just going to interact with the switch directly in front of us. There we go. Job done. So that's going to stop the fan, and now we can actually, there's the piece of paper that we need. That's just going to lovingly drop for us right on the floor. Um, so, again, I'm not sure if you can die from this height, but I'm just going to carefully just start heading down anyway, just in case. Uh, so head to the left. We're basically heading down, so it really doesn't matter what, you know, what way you go down as long as you end up down. We can drop from this height, that's fine. Apparently death isn't an issue from that height, but a little bit further up is whatever. And just past the steps here, this is where the next uh, paper is. So we're going to pop that in, and then we can just go straight in front of us to the door. Remember, if you do get stuck on your own, if you're trying to do some puzzles or whatever on your own, press the left bumper if you choose, if you chose assist mode. So, after we get out of here, interact with the door once more for the glitched exclamation mark, exclamation mark, exclamation mark achievement. And we will also get the car and the spiders from Mars achievement before beginning level 8, the peel. It's a key P. It is time to go for a little swim. And it's not a little swim, it's a big one. So from here, head to the left anyway. We're going to interact with the lever first as we begin. Uh, now, there are no missable achievements on this level, so we can just finish the level without having to worry about a ting. Head down and into the left, right at the sort of bottom here by the gate. You're going to see another lever switch that we can interact with. There we go. That's going to get the... Um, Whites on the floors going. Now, this puzzle is a bit of a... It's not a puzzle, but it is just a platforming section where... I highly advise against jumping, because you can jump in also... The jumping is just quite clunky in this game. There's one thing I didn't particularly like about this game. It was the jumping. It was quite clunky. So, I highly advise just walking onto the next platform. Bada bing, bada boom. There we go. Um, if you do end up dying... As long as you've gone onto the red parts and collected, because there are four red parts on here, we need to collect four different items. Um, this basically acts as a checkpoint. So if you die from here on out, you'll just come back to this bit. As you can see, I died on pretty much every single part. That is why there was just a small edit right there. Uh, but there's nothing else to say here except take your time, walk across. I did get lucky with that one, in all fairness, until we get to the other side. But you have to pick up all four items off the red bits. Here we are, right at the very end. So together we made it. Together we didn't die as much, sort of. Right, head up the steps to the left. And then go to the right. That's the pool that we're going to need to go into in just a little bit. But we obviously need a diving suit. Because Slenderman's arms won't let him do that. So heading all the way to the right. We're going to go uh, not down the steps, but sort of straight up here. Now to the left. 
not not straight, so he was left. So you need to just go, it's kind of tricky to see this bit, but you need to sort of go up and to the left, as it were. And then eventually, we're going to come out past these lights, and you can see a little puzzle that we can um, have a look at. So, what you need to do, first of all, is interact with the console in the middle. This is where we get the diving suit, by the way. Now, the ones that you need, you basically have to follow the white lines, and um, that'll tell you what to input. But all we're going to do, on the very left one, we're going to hit it three times to uh, put the square on. So it's a square, kind of looks like a YouTube symbol. Onto the next one, just to the right of that. We're going to hit that again another three times, so that it becomes a double T. So, TT, yeah, TD. And then for the next one to the right of the console, we're going to hit it another two times. To, so, it's a double L shoe looking thing. And then we're going to interact with the console. So, again, if you wanted to uh, see the puzzle for itself and how to um, complete it, you just have to follow these sort of white lines on the floor. And that'll tell you which one you need to input. Otherwise, that's as easy as that. The fourth one on the very right, we, can, uh, we just left alone. So, we're going to head down here, and to the left, what we need to do is do a little bit of climbing. So, climb up the stairs. Again, you can fall off there, so just be careful. And you're going to end up here on this little uh, platformy, bitty section. Just keep walking straight for now. And then we are eventually going to come back onto the place with the lights. There we go. So, heading down... Again, there's the pew. We need to jump over the pipes. Now, for whatever particular reason, this uh, just done my nut in a little bit. I couldn't jump over. Uh, so if you can, give yourself a bit of a running start and just quickly tap the B button and that should get you just about over. Yes, this took me longer than I um, care to admit. So, we finally make it. Hooray, we made it! So we're going to jump straight down. And we're going to actually have to climb up the steps this time to the left of us. So very hard to see, but the steps are to the left of us there. And now we can go into the diving suit bit. And guess what that's going to give us? Yes, it's going to give us a little diving suit. It's, it's incredible what happens when you, uh, you know, when you want something. So when we get that, now we can start heading into the pew. And we can just jump off the conveyor belt there, lovely. So, head up the steps here. Now we can interact with what is the oxygen tank type thing. Now be careful, there is a uh, jellyfish in here. That, of course, will kill you dead if he touches you once. He's going to start off in the middle of the area. So, you should have enough time to just go around him and drain the water, which is exactly what we're going to do. So, don't go straight into the middle. Pick up the ore first. And then run directly in front of you. And then what you're going to do is interact with the valve here on the right-hand side. That's going to drain the water. And that will make death... <laughs> that will make death leave you alone for just a little... Just a little bit longer. Just a little bit longer. Eventually. Come here, you son of a... Again, can be kind of finicky there. So, you know, try and run away. Luckily, he gets just sucked down. Job done. Right, so when that one is done, we can now interact with... Eventually, we're going to interact with this second uh, valve... So if it doesn't, uh, if it didn't unlock for you, just, uh, you know, wiggle the left stick. Right, what we're going to do, go behind us and pass the boat. And on the right-hand side here in, is this light. So we need to interact with this light and that will smash that doin. Go back on yourself again, pack past the boat and you can see the sort of light already on the floor. So interact with the light on the floor. And that is going to uh, darken that and get us that one. So head down again. And eventually, you're going to see another light on the floor that we can interact with. Kablamo! And then eventually, after doing those three, go straight in front of you, back to the wall here for another light. And another chance to cause some carnage, cause some chaos. That's going to get rid of the lights up there. Now what we need to do is interact with the first valve that we did to raise the water back up. But immediately turn around and just walk onto the boat. So, go back around, walk onto the boat, and that is how we have done that section. Then, when we get here, we can just head through the door, simple as popping pimple. So, 
So, just a few things that we got to do in here. I mean, it's going to be like that through the entire game. A few things we got to do. So, walk straight in front of us, past the radioactive man Ooze. Interact with this first valve that you come across. And that's going to do some... some stuff. Interact with the second one directly below you. Or sort of just to the right of you, whatever. Go uh, straight ahead of you into this sort of open wide area. And the third one will be directly by this door. And guess what that's going to do? That's going to open the door for us. Fantastic. So let's head through the door now, shall we? And as you can see on the side, it's going to light up the way for us. Now, this is another little puzzle. What you need to do is interact with the lever. Now, the squares in the water, every time the one lights up, you need to jump on it. So, as soon as it's lit up, jump on it. And do the same with all the others. So, as soon as it lights up, just jump. There we go. And you just keep doing that for the entire way. Chapter. Right, now we are going for glitched exclamation mark, exclamation mark, exclamation mark, exclamation mark, which is times four. So this is the start of the level. Now this one honestly done my absolute itty bitty titty McVitties in, in all fairness. All we have to do is basically just go to the opposite end. So all we're doing is just keep heading to the left. There's nothing else to really explain about it, but I kept jumping, sometimes not jumping. Again, the game can be very finicky with that. You've just got to if you, for me, it seemed to be, if, if I held my thumb on the B button for too long, um, it, it just wouldn't jump like so. So you're going to literally tap it, kept dying a lot, um, <laughs> but that's fine. Because if you do, like I said earlier, if you do end up dying anyway, you're just going to be put back at the same spot that you were, maybe just a little bit more to the left or right or whatever. But again, all we're doing is just heading basically straight. So straight and all the way left. Try not to die as many times <laughs> as I did right here. Man, I was useless at this bit. But again, there's nothing else to do, no enemies or anything, so it's literally just jumping and trying not to dying. That took the absolute itty bitty piss bags. Right, anyway, we've made it. So when we get to this pool, after finally making it, interact with the fishing rod here. And again, we are going to go for a little uh, a little fishing trip, as it were. So head onto the diving board for a sit down. You will grab the plane. And there we go. That's it. Thank God. And so, as usual, picking up the plane, interacting with the door. And you need to interact with the door again there to finish the level. That will get you the pool achievement. Plus, of course, the four times glitched achievement. The four exclamation marked glitched achievement. Uh, just as soon as we end this level, which is actually coming up uh, soon. So we just need to keep walking forward. And then as soon as the giant fans start here, jump, um, stand in the middle of the giant fan on the floor. Press the B button to jump up. And that's our key.
Right, onto the wire. So, there are only 12 levels, and we're on to level 9 already. So, yeah, let's go. So, for now, what we're going to do is keep following the path ahead. Again, our ghostly apparition of our wife seems to just kind of be teasing us, to be honest. I've had enough of it. Enough of it. But we finally come up to a new area then. One with a tent, which we're going to go past. Past the ropes on the bondage tree. And head down the right here. We're going to see a ladder that we can automatically, and we automatically will climb down. So don't worry about uh, you falling off or anything like that. Squared away. You are squared away. Uh, and again, when we go to the bottom here, you'll automatically jump off, which is all fine. So what we're going to do is interact with this lever here. And we're going to see that it is jammed and there's nothing we can do about it. So we've now got to head back up. Man, the game's really making us work hard for this stuff. Once we're at the top here, go to the right, you're going to see a knife stuck in a... Oh, that's not a knife, that's a spoon. Obviously, you've played knife or spoony before. No, but there is a knife that we could grab. Head to the umbrella here and get what looks like uh, suntan lotion or something. So make sure to grab that as well. So that's the, the oil or whatever it is, the knife. And then we can head back down the ladder. Ah, now we've got the items we need. What we're going to do this time is interact with the uh, team jigger again. That will work. That will put the ladder down. And once again, we can head all the way back up. <laughs> this time, then, we're going to head to the left. And this time, we're going to cut the rope to get the boulder smashing down. The old bondage boulder, as I like to call it for some particular unknown reason. So, head back down the ladder again. And then what you're going to find and what you're going to see is that we're obviously a bit too weak, of course. We do have Slenderman arms and Slenderman legs. We are chicken slender ourselves. Um, but apparently we're going to eat a little mushroom and that's going to give us some Super Mario strength or something. Um, so you need to jump up onto the rock here and go into the radioactive ooze. That's exactly where we're going. Uh, there's a whole bunch of mushrooms in here, um, which I highly advise. If you're out in the wild and you see mushrooms, do not eat them. Just don't eat them. You don't actually get strength like this, okay? So it doesn't matter what mushroom you pick here. Make sure to eat that, and you do turn Super Mario green. You're going to hear the Mario music? <laughs> no, you're not. But what this actually does now, um, quickly knock out, uh, go out, jump down. And then just interact with the boulder again, and somehow that gets the Chris Redfield from Resident Evil 5 strength. Where he manages to punch a boulder away, you know. Well, if you play Resident Evil, you'll know exactly what I mean. But anyway, the Mario strength stops. We can start climbing down the ladder now. In Back into the radioactive ooze, but again, we're not gonna actually going to jump on it this time. We're jumping across it. We're onto the beach, so a little bit of uh, restitution, a little bit of rest for a moment. But it's not, because we actually have to find now uh, three switches, which is fine. Make sure to pick up the next memory here, the next memory photo. This will be three out of five, so it's, it's in your way, so you can't really miss it. But it is easy if you're not really paying attention to just glide past it, as it were. So make sure to pick that one up there before heading on. So our ghostly apparition of child will sort of float away. Go to the right here. And we need to make a jump for it. Again, just tap the B button to jump over. Uh, rather than keep your finger on it. That actually doesn't work. As much as you want it to, it doesn't. Interact with the lever. That will get the first one going. By the way, if you just drown and you end up dying here, you'll just start at the sort of beginning of the boardwalk. So, so then, when we are back here, we can just go up. We're going to go to the right. 
And then we're going to go up once again. And then, of course, when we go left, we're going to interact with the next lever. Right then, so when we get here and we've done, we're going to do jump across to the right. So if you can give yourself a little bit of a, a little bit of a momentum, then we're going to head to the left at this fork, and then we're going to go up, or sort of to the left again, whatever. Sorry. And now, what we need to do for some reason, I kept dying annoyingly in this part because there is a bit of a pole in the way. So you need to jump to the left now, or sort of going down. Um, but of course, you have to avoid the pole. So jump down, keep going. There's the deadly apparition of our child. Head down to the... Uh, keep going straight, sorry. Jump over again. And there is the third and final lever. So there's nothing else to do here except get to the very top. So from here, what you need to do is uh, just jump across back to the left. And then all you're doing then is basically heading up. So to the right and to the up. And that's it. T -t 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 -t. So, interact with the uh, lever again. How many times have I said that so far in this bloody game? <laughs> we interact with the lever, and then we are just going to go onto the boat. Uh, you should be able to walk down lovely. Right, you automatically sit down, and now this next section, all you have to do then, sort of keep heading to the right, but you need to try and avoid the mines and the sharks if you can. So, uh, it, it's not a big section, but again, just try and avoid any of the sharks and the mines. So that you don't die, of course. Again, comes very much in handy. Right, now, what's everybody's, as we get through the door here, what is everybody's favourite section of a video game? Did everyone say underwater levels? Oh, that's right. Eh, eh, wrong, but that's what we gotta do. So this game just shoves literally every kind of level at us. So we're heading underwater. Right, what you need to do then? Um, now this is a pain in the ass. Of course, this is just one that you just have to avoid mines and sharks and things like that. You're gonna see oxygen tanks right in front of you. So as soon as you get to one, spam the A button as quickly as you can. Now the reason I tell you to do this is because this is a weird sort of. Uh, the controls are weird in the water. So you can press the B button, press and hold the B button to go faster. But what you end up doing is, um, if you keep pressing up, you'll actually start floating up in the river, or floating up in the water, and to get back down, um, you don't, to get back down, but all we're doing is following the pipe, okay, just, while well, just avoiding stuff, but to get back down, you can't actually just press down and go back, and, you know, go down, you have to go, you have to keep swimming up a bit and then press down in order for you to start sort of floating down, it's, it's a weird, it's weird. It's kind of weird, okay? But it did take me a couple of attempts. But there is another oxygen mask here to the right. Now, and this is a, this is the first part of where you can't just float yourself back down. You've got to swim on and then go backwards. Avoid the jellyfish again, if you can. Plenty of jellyfish and mines about. Same with sharks here. Now, what you were supposed to do is um, sort of wait a little bit. But obviously, because I missed the first oxygen tank, or the last one, um, yeah... That's why I had had to just crack on with that. Now, all the, these oxygen tasks, uh, tanks act as checkpoints as well. So every time you die, you'll just go back to your last previous um, <laughs> oxygen tank. Now, this is where, again, you were supposed to wait because there are plenty of sharks about. But I managed to just uh, crack on and keep going. So there's only one way you can go is just following the pipes as you interact with the next oxygen tank here. 
like I said, it acts as a checkpoint. If you die, you'll just come back to this one. Uh, but yeah, the, the swimming mechanics are very, very weird in this game. Another sort of down point of this game, really, which is a shame. Uh, it just, it just acts, it's just so weird, the controls. But anyway, you'll, you'll get used to it, and then eventually, when, once you've avoided everything, topping yourself up lovely, what you're going to do is eventually come to a point where the oxygen tank will be on the floor. And we are coming up to it here, just to the right-hand side of us. There, there, there'll never be anything on the left except for things to avoid. So there it is. So what you need to do then is go right as much as you can, and then start heading back down, and that is how you start floating down. It's, again, it's such a weird, weird way. And then, again, like I said, when you get to the oxygen tank, press the A button to spam it, and then go to the right slightly to spam the A button to go onto the lever. And then from here, then, once the scene has ended, what we're just going to do is head to the right. So we've got, yeah, nothing nothing to do here. Don't worry about that. Uh, no enemies can get us now. We're just going to head to the right. And we are going to go up. There it is. Spam your way up, and there we go. So I know I kind of made it look easy. That's the power of editing, by the way. Um, but, yeah, so that, that swimming section was just a... Why do underwater levels just suck ass super hard in video games? Why can't they just have a nice underwater level where we just go for a nice little jolly swim, say hello to the fishes, and get out the other side? I just... Man, underwater levels soak! Welcome then to the Van Allen Radiation Belt. So what you're going to do is head to the back first and interact with this lever on the big 2 sign. Uh, go past the Y sign and interact with the sort of 5 piece sign if you want, the 5 piece one. So the very one on the very left, interact with that. And now we can interact with the middle console. There we go. XY2 means XY2. So when that one is done, head into the middle of the uh, sort of beams. And then you can interact with this item or whatever. Well, whatever it is, we just grabbed it anyway. Head down. Don't worry about going in the pool. If you want to, you can go for a nice swim, even though we've had enough of water. Interact with this console with a big G sign on it. And that is, uh, that's basically the gravity. So you need to head directly in front of you now. There's going to be a, a button in the air. This one that we need to push. So keep spamming the A button when you're around it. And what that'll do is open up the door to the right of us and stick us straight back in the pool. I don't want any more underwater levels in my video games. God damn it. Right, there is going to be a drone that will follow us. So you need to be quite quick on your marks here. So just keep going uh, forward for the time being. There's going to be a Palatin bike right in the middle of the uh, center there. There comes the drone. So just head straight up the stairs. Go down to the right in between the two desks. Keep going into these next two desks as well. Down the steps. To the right. And then we need to go in the room here on the left. So sort of down. Now the drone won't follow us anymore. What you need to do though is grab a hammer. Which is on this desk in between these two desks. There it is. Grab this hammer. And then go ahead and try to kill the rabbit with it. If you want a rabbit stew. I know a mean one. Bash a bunny on its head. And then he becomes the Easter bunny. In heaven. Okay, no, that, that was nasty of me. I like bunnies. But anyway, pick up the hammer, try to kill the bunny, job done. Make sure to get that rabbit killer before we interact with the snake on the right-hand side, okay? You have to get that achievement before we get rid of this snake because you end up losing the hammer and you'll have to play this whole game again up to this point and nobody wants to do that, do they? So anyway, what's going to happen is the snake is going to act as a uh, deterrent. Um... A distraction rather than a deterrent, sorry. So then just go around the cubes. Don't go out of the room. The tubes, sorry, not the cubes. And interact with this console. And then that is going to burn this drone to death. Job done. So we need to head out of this room now. If you can get around the tubes. So that got rid of the drone. So that's all good. We're going to head to the left. 
We're going to get another missable achievement, which I would highly advise getting now. So we head back down, basically back to where the Peloton bike was, right in the middle there. Go on, push it. Yeah, pay me £500 a month to push it. Yeah. Go, uh, not up the stairs, but we need to go to where this rocket is. Now, all you got to do is push this button three times until the rocket engineer achievement unlocks. Again, the reason that we're getting this now is because if you progress the story too much, you will not be able to do this. And again, you'll have to replay the game to get to this point. Right, so that's the two missable achievements in this area out of the way. So what we're going to do is head uh, back towards where the peloton bike is. And again, what you're going to do here, get on it and then just spam the A button a number of times until the big screen in front of us unlocks. Slicey. So when we interact with the Pac-Man style arcade machine, it's going to tell us that we need three things. So immediately we're going to drop down to the right and interact with the uh, medal in the photo frame here. That's going to drop and then we need to pick that up. So again, like I said, make sure to pick that boy up. Make that boy up now, boy. Right, so for the next item, we are going to head up the steps and on the desk, which is the sort of furthest away from where the medal was, we're going to interact with this computer to get rid of the di uh, the, <laughs> the floppy dick. Uh, disk, sorry, floppy disk. Well, that's close enough. Right, for the next one, we need to head back over to the rocket part now. This is why we got the rocket engineer out of the way, because we won't be able to do this now. Go up and uh, interact with the instructions. Now on the empty rocket shell beside you then, um, interact with and pick up the lever. Eventually you might have to go to the other side, in fact you will probably have to go to the other side, yes indeedy. Up the Tweeby. So pick up the lever, go to the left and insert this lever onto the rocket. So that sticks that on, this bad boy can fit so much Gorilla Glue on it. Go to the left and interact here with this little generator thing. That's going to mess it up somehow. And then we just press the same button that we did for the rocket engineer achievement. And that is going to explode the target. Rendering the achievement now voided if you didn't get it. Oh boy. Before leaving, make sure to pick up the lever once again. There, there she blows, mate. And that should be all three items that the... Pac-Man arcade game wanted you to do. So from here, we can just head back now to the Pac-Man arcade game machine. And, well, basically, we're just going to play it now. But it's an automatic thing, so you haven't got anything to do for a minute. Toidy me! Unbelievable stuff that we don't have to do anything, thank God. Anyway, so that small barrier that we could have easily, very, very easily climbed over before now opens up, so that's nice. So we can just head down to the right, drop down again, and now we can finally go over the easily climbable barrier. Right, 
this is going to be an important part. So um, we need to grab the rabbit first, actually. So apologies about that. This is where, when we get the, the rabbit, before going onto the cart, or just as you grab onto it, um, as we go ahead now and grab the bunny, we're going to make another backup save for what could be perceived as the hardest achievement in the game. Um, and it's in the next level for not dying du during, uh, during the surveillance camera section, okay? And obviously I'll let you know exactly what we're going to do. So this is basically the end of this level. That's all good. The end of the level, that's that's what we need. So uh, interact with the uh, rabbit wheel there. Interact with the button next to it, the console. That's going to get open this big rabbit, which the rabbit would know it's fake, but you know, it's video games and stuff. Or a rabbit's a bit silly. <laughs> right, so what that is going to do is enable the gate to be opened, and now we can jump onto the cart. But, like I said, very, very... In fact, it is extremely important to make a backup save here. So, remember what I said earlier. We are going to um, completely quit out of the game now. So, completely back out of the game. Completely quit out. And then, again, like I said, what that's going to do is save it to the cloud. Now, the reason I say this is extremely important here, because this is one where you can easily get caught by the surveillance cameras. And it's one of those that you have to do the very first time. So... That's why it is highly important, very, very important, that we make the backup save here. Now, remember, if you do end up... So, now your game should be saved to the cloud. Remember, and I'll tell you at the end of it as well. But if you do end up messing up and you do end up getting caught, when the game's open, press the dashboard button to go back. Select the game and press the start button, the three lines button. Select manage games and add-ons. Select save data and click delete all. So that will close the game, and then when you select it, it will just download your cloud save from there. Very, very important. I end up getting through. I did end up getting through it the first time, in all fairness, but I got lucky with some parts. But we'll finish off level ten anyway. So every time now, like I said, if you've done the cloud save, every time you back it off, you should start from this point if needed. Um. So in terms of the cart, it's. What's very important is, as you'll be able to see, with the right trigger, if you go too fast, there's no brake, so it takes longer to stop. As you can see, we've got these two electric uh, things to get through, so just stop by letting go of the right trigger. For the next section and the surveillance cameras, take your time. For the love of God, absolutely take your time. There's no point rushing it because you will get caught, uh, but this is the end of level 10 anyway, so we'll be coming up to level 11 now. You can go backwards with the left trigger as well, by the way. Rightio, so make sure your cart is just past here the barrier. The barrier will close, but now we can get off and we can kick this big energy thing. You need this, otherwise you won't be able to get past the big monsters uh, a little bit later on. So when we jump up here, we are going to uh, back it up a bit so the big energy thing, <laughs> the big energy ball, whatever it is, attaches. So this is where the Sneaker Master achievement comes into it. There is going to be a whole bunch of cameras on either side um, that will be spinning around. Now, we cannot get caught by one at all. So, like I said, remember, if you do get caught, remember to do all the things I said uh, to uh, go back to your backup save. So, as you can see, it is the red cone that you need to avoid. If it's easier for you, what I ended up doing was, on the left side, I was able to look at the red cone. But the right side... It was kind of... I, I couldn't really see. Uh, the red cones on the right side were, were very um, uh, very light. You couldn't really see. So I was just looking at the cameras, the actual cameras themselves on the right-hand side, making sure they, they were the opposite side, and then going for it. 
But again, like I said, just take your time with it. No need to rush at all. And hopefully you get past this bit the first time. I got lucky. I got lucky with that last bit then. Uh, to be honest, I genuinely thought I literally went for it right there at the end. But <laughs> I know I did get lucky with that one. Uh, for these big monsters, bit by the way, don't go too fast because they'll shoot you dead. So um, for the next minute or so, just keep um, tapping the right trigger and go slow as you can. It literally says right there, go slow. I decided to go against the advice, but yeah, anyway, like I said, hopefully you got past that bit um, first time. Keep going back to the uh, cloud saves however many times you need it. Um, but yeah, so with that bit done, that, that is basically effectively now the hardest achievement in the game out of the way now. And a lot of it is just still some missables, but very, very easy. So we're smooth sailing from now, boys and girls. Get in there. <laughs> Right, so we're into the greenhouse now. What we're going to do is head outside, not too fast, but we're going to pick up this big energy, big chunky nugget thing. Lashy bras. Fantastic. Right, what you need to do then is put that on the obvious tube that is missing. So we're going to do that. And now all we got to do is a little bit of, um, if we interact here with the console... What you're going to do is be able to move a satellite dish. Now what you need to do is move it around until you see... The white sort of things go yellow, and you can hear, you probably hear it as well with the music. The music will sort of stop a little bit or something, but the, the white flashing thing on the satellite, as soon as you see it turn yellow, press the A button, and you just got to do that three times. And just like Homer Simpson making his own drinks, that explodes all the bathtubs, I mean all the greenhouse, and we can happily now go as fast as Larry, whoever the hell Larry is, uh, enjoying the music, and here we are at the very end. Blamo! So, how do you feel now that you've got the hardest achievement out of the way, guys and gals? We all good? We feeling a bit less sweaty, a little uh, less brown pants time? Squish, squish, squish. I would be, yes. Right, so just head forward for the time being, and now we're going to have to fix a flying drone. So, interact with the drone to get this bit going. Now, the first fan that we need is directly in front and just to the left of us there on the car. So, pick that one up. That'll be the first one. Go back down. 
And by the way, it's incredible that this guy's held onto his briefcase for as long as he has as well, going through all that. Even swimming. Uh, head down past the oil or the radioactive barrels, past the ship, or just close to the ship there, is the next fan. From here, what we can do is just head up again. And uh, past the swinging tyre, past a couple of cars on our left. And there is the last and final fan next to these radioactive dead death barrels. Now just interact with the drone once again. And that will get that flying like a biz bag. Ow. So as we've just gone through the greenhouse, we need to uh, uh, kick these big poles in a specific order. Uh, very, very easy. So make sure to kick the left one first. So it goes bing. So left one first for bing. Second one, make sure to kick the left one again for bing. So basically it's left, left, right, left, right. So the third one, kick the right one for bong. Fourth one, kick the left one for bing. And then for the last one, kick the right one for bong. So it's left, left, right, left, right. Bing, bing, bong. Bing, bong. Bing, bong. Bing, bong. It's off to work, we schlong. What the hell does your schlong have to do with your work unless you are a porn star? Uh, right, anyway, we just keep heading forward anyway for now. Man, that's a hell of a job. Being the cameraman to a porn film. We can't do anything. Man, it must be weird, actually. Imagine being a sound man and, like, cameraman for, like, for stuff to do with porn and that. Constant erections! Anyway, what we're going to do, um, the little gold thing is going to go up there, and now we can go finally start heading, heading up the big escalator to heaven. Where were you when they built the escalator to heaven? Ha! Ah, up. Yeah, you don't have to tell a cameraman at a porn movie that. He knows what up means. Right, so directly in front of us here, as we get up onto the three steps, is the next memory. Memory four out of five. So make sure to pick this one up. As I said, that will be memory four out of five now. So the last one is going to be on the last level called the event Horizon. Right, we are going to be coming up now as we go in here. A couple of things that we've got to do, as is the per usual, as we've been doing throughout the entire game so far. Um, and one sort of slight boss, if you will. Very easy, so don't worry about that. We're going to get him out of the way first. So um, you don't actually have to walk as slow as I am, but just keep heading forward for the time being. Okay, right, go around the pole, and what you're going to see is a big giant bug thing which has the ability to laser zap you to death. And the way to get this, you see the red dots on the floor, the red flashing dots, as soon as you go past one, then he's going to shoot it. What you need to do is get your friend behind you, and do that. So make sure that your friend is behind you, your little drone. Go onto the red dots, and then immediately run to the right or left of the screen. And what that's going to do is smash him again. You just need to do this a total of three times in order to beat this drone boss thing. So again, make sure he's behind you. 
and then you can just go ahead and run away. You can actually push your drone friend into the uh, sort of danger zone, if you will. The danger zone! And you can do it that way as well, if you so wish. If not, well, it's all good. That's, uh, that is how you beat the drone boss. Right, before moving on, uh, go around the big boss. And sadly, it's time for death. So interact with your drone friend one more time, and that'll get us the goodbye, my friend. Goodbye, my lover. Goodbye, my drone friend. Sorry that I made you alive, just to bloody kill you off. Sorry, broski. But that's it. So make sure to actually interact with him before going through the door here in order to get the goodbye, my friend achievement. Okay, guess what happens when we're going through the door? Well, we are going to get the Electromagnetic Fields achievement, and now we're on to the final level. This is the a, a big level, but it's not hard or anything like that. Um, so all we're doing for the time being is running through a couple of doors. Um, sometimes you'll have to go left and right. I'll obviously tell you which ones they will be. So the first set of doors that we're going to come up to, um, we're going to be going through the left door. It's coming up in just a bit. There we go. So make sure to go through the uh, right door. So right, sorry, right door. My pad. Please don't hate me for not doing uh, just specifically Game Pass games. <laughs> I wonder who I could be talking about. Um, <laughs> so the right door first, and then just run up to the opposite end again. And interact with the right-hand side door again, and then just go for another little jolly um, crap your pants brown jog. This time, we're going to do something different and so out of the norm. We're going to go through the left door this time. And straight back into a routine then is through the right door. So this next section then, you just have to take it very slow. Make sure to, it's basically walking around and not through the glass. As soon as you walk through the glass and make a noise, um, a drone will come and kill you and you just have to replay this part again. So take your time, no need to run. It can be kind of tricky to see some of the glass shards sometimes. But it's pretty much a straight path, so just get through the glass without making a noise, and job done. And when you finally got that, like the legends that you are, go through the left door once again. And for the next bit, all there is is just the jumping section. So you can run and jump. And again, if you end up dying through the hole... Oh, in fact, it's not this section yet. It'll be the one after this. Close enough. But just go ahead and go back through the left door. Now, 
Next, we're going to go through the right door, and this is finally the jumping section. So again, there's nothing else to do here except jump over the chasm so that you do not fall to your death. I know Slender Man and death go hand in hand, but we're trying not to do that. So just keep jumping up, try not to fall, and head to the opposite side like a chicken in the road. Right after we jump through the last one, head through the right door again. And next, we're gonna go through the left door. I know it does seem like it's never ending, but it will end eventually. <laughs> so, left door. Oh, in fact, now it actually ends. So, what we need to do directly in front of us here is a drone leg that we can pick up. And then on the left, you can see a little Wi Fi box which we're gonna uh, interact with. And we're gonna smash that open for what looks like, uh, well, a Kind of looks like an Xbox pad, or uh, kind of looks like a Nintendo. I, I went for GameCube, but anyway. Uh, so we've got the controller anyway. What you need to do is head up on to this robot and press the A button next to the sort of Wi-Fi button and robot. And now you can control the robot. So head to the left and interact with the console, and that'll get rid of the fire. Now to regain control of Slenderman, uh, what you can do is, uh, you, all you got to do is head back to Slenderman and press the A button, that'll give control back to us. So head to the opposite side, and now we're going to control this next robot. There we go, we in control? Yes we are. So we're going to head basically to the right and up. Uh, you can't run, not as much, but you're just going to keep on heading to the right and up for the time being, and we can interact with this console. That's going to get rid of the old steam bags. Coming back down, interacting with Slenderman again, go back to the opposite side to interact with that robot, and then push the console in order for us to be able to move on. Right, so, as it appears, we're obviously not going to get through the fire, so there is a robot here to interact with. Once again, go all the way to the right-hand side, sort of up on yourself or whatever, because somehow our little broski, <laughs> Ro broski wrote, wrote here, <laughs> Ro broski right here will not burn, melt, and die, which always comes in mega handy with stuff like this. So, uh, you can see that there is a window that we can actually go through, so uh, go through and straight and interact with the console, that's going to interact with and get rid of all the fire. Now we can just head all the way back down to the left, interact with Slenderman himself in order for us to regain control and head back up. And then for the three doors, you're going to go to the very, very left one. The one with the, um, oh, they've all got the same symbol on it. Anyway, it's the very left one, okay? <laughs>
oh boy, isn't this a fun puzzle? It's really dragged on a little bit in all fairness. So, interact with the robot. You need to go up. And then you need to interact with this robot. So, basically, the, the, what you have to do is, as one robot, you have to open up doors by pressing on certain buttons. And vice versa, the, the other one. So, drop down. Interact with this yellow one. Now, this door will always stay open. Go back up and interact with the other robot again. And then we can just head back down. We can go through the newly opened yellow door, so do that. Now we can click on the blue one. That's going to open up the one to the uh, right of us. So now go all the way back and interact with the next robot again. Yes, this puzzle is very, very back and forth. So now we can go down and then go through the newly opened blue door. Blue door. Ah, um, blue double door, double door. Uh, go all the way at the back and interact with the yellow door. It's going to open up the uh, yellow button, which will open up the yellow door. Ho oh, door, ho oh, door. Right, head through the blue door. We need to go all the way back to interact with the next, <laughs> the other robot again. Ah, this is just great. I'm having such good time. Now we can go up and through this door, or the yellow door. So, yeah, sort of up and then down. Uh, head past our old robot buddy. What's up, bro? What's up, Robra? And now we can actually go into the uh, room here. So interact with this blue square. Then go down when the door opens to interact with the next blue square. That'll open up that one to get us the way gone. Now we have to go all the way back. And, oh, well, we can interact with the robot here. That's fine. But now we've got to come all the way back to open up the last square, which gives us the yellow... Um, opens up the yellow door, and then we've just got to go back to give uh, uh, regain control of Slenderman. Oh, in fact, we do it automatically. That's all cool. So now just go ahead and follow where all the doors were in order to get to the other side. Very, uh, again, very chickeny. But you have to go through all the doors, unfortunately. Oh boy, isn't this fun? We're on to glitched exclamation mark, exclamation mark, exclamation mark, exclamation mark, exclamation mark, which was five if you were counting. So we have to, basically what we're going to do is we start heading down now. Keep heading down, keep heading down, and when you see this wire here, we need to interact with everyone that we've basically played so far. You need to press the A button twice, by the way, in order to uh, switch characters. So press the A button. Now we are ourselves at basically the beginning of the game. We have to find the specific paper plane. So head to the left, past the floating door, and right where the drone is, uh, right where this sort of taxi guy is, right here, you need to keep heading down, sorry. So keep heading down behind the taxi. This is where the first paper plane is. What that will do then is open up a door for us, uh, and that'll sort of get rid of this character so we're all good. And it's, like I said, the floating door there right in the middle of the room. So interact with the floating door, and then we'll just go back to uh, Pete Slenderman. I don't know why his name's Pete, but he kind of looks like a Pete to me. So that is what we have to do. Get to a specific character and we have to find a specific paper plane. So head back down and to the left, past this floating door. And go up through these desks to find Super Mario Pete Slenderman. Literally don't know why his name is Pete, but that, that's, he, he does just look like a Pete. Virgin Pete Slenderman. So head up. Uh, past the control panel right there, to the left, where a, another Pete Slenderman is to find the next paper plane. And then what we can do, we can head back down, go up to the right, and there is our door. So hold the door for me, hold on. Super Mario, Super Mario Pete Slenderman is coming through, huh? Right, next one we've got to find. Uh, keep heading straight up for the time being, and then go left. Oh, sorry, keep going straight up. And what we're going to do is interact with the taxi, Pete Slenderman, this time. Uh, now, what you're supposed to do is actually go back down on ourselves, but for whatever reason, that uh, didn't seem to work. So, uh, we just keep heading up and to the right, past all the sort of mushroom area, 
keep going, keep going. Here's the big, big bug area to find the next paper plane. That's all good. Then when we get out of here, the door once again will be to our right. So there we go. Interact with the door. Now again, obviously none of none of the enemies or anything, the sharks or anything can hurt you. So no panic or bother about that. No, yeah, no, no. Right, go to the right, sort of head up. Keep heading. We're into the mushroom area, so we're going to uh, speak to Magic Mushroom Pete Slenderman. Uh, it kind of looks like it kind of like a child, like he's just been told off with a blippy hat on. <laughs> blippy. <laughs> uh, keep heading right anyway um, into the sort of mine area, and there is the next paper plane. And if anyone's got kids, you will know who Blippy is, and he is the single most annoying character, but god damn, he's rich. So, well, I'll give him that. So there's the door anyway. <laughs> and if you don't know who Blippy is, he says this voice for a lot of his life. It's me, Blippy. It's like a it's like an American Super Mario, but more annoying. So head to the right anyway. Uh, as we get with Pete Slenderman again. Go to the left, and we will now be dressing up as Diving Pool um, Pete Slenderman. So, if you were wanting to know sort of what, obviously, you need to do, obviously, the pool one is where all the sharks and the sea mines are. So, heading down to the left, past the yellow cabinets, to the right here, and that is where the paper planes is. Just, you can see where the um, two sort of yellow filing cabinets are, in case you were wondering where that is. Head through the door. That is ending this particular section. Or, well, at least diving pool Pete. Diving pool Pete Slenderman. Right, from here, we're going to go back down. And we're going to go left, past the two cabinets there, past the two yellow filing cabinet big things. Keep going, keep going. And here we are then with all the lights. Interact with, it's right by the coat rack by the way, uh, the next p uh, paper uh, plane was. That is what's going to actually end this five time exclamation mark glitched section. Now of course remember this is basically the final level of the game so we're all good. But you do still have to go through the door. But that is what will get us the glitched exclamation mark, exclamation mark, exclamation mark, exclamation mark, exclamation mark achievement. Right, this is not a bad section, but there are robots that will be patrolling every time that we interact with one of the levers. So, go to the right from here. And it's kind of a long, big section. Now we're going to go straight, so basically keep going straight as you were. Man, you want to run a lot faster than that, pal. <laughs> you know, I feel I feel your legs and your ankles crunching. From here, head to the left to interact with the first switch. So, when the how, how has the camera has panned out, you can see an enemy starting to come down that way. Now, that's the reason why we haven't gone this way. So, you need to go back on yourself ever so slightly. This next junction, we are going to, as you can see, the enemy on the right there was going the way you came. So there was no way that we could have gone there. Otherwise, that would have been death, death, death. So keep going straight to the four-way T-junction. As you can see, next left is the next switch. Now, for whatever reason then, when I press it, the camera pans back down. So what we actually have to do from here is we need to go next, sort of up. But the robot is going to come... Now, If hopefully your camera is panned out, because what you're going to see is the robot um, walk in the opposite direction, um, which is annoying. So, just, um, obviously, you need to just listen out. If, if the camera pans back in as it does, listen out for the robot walking past. He's going to go to the left of where we are right now, so that should be good. Uh, edge forward, as long as you know that he's gone, now we can head back down to the right. And for some reason, the camera is going to start panning out now, so thanks for that. Uh, camera, much appreciated. So, at the next junction, we are now going to head to the right. And we are actually going to be coming up to the final switch now. When we get here, then, we are going to take another right. So, make sure to do that. And there is the third and final switch. But again, there will be another enemy that will appear. So we need to keep going to the left this time. So he does appear on our right. So keep heading to the left. Go to the left again. Because there is another one that is coming into your direction. <laughs> coming into your direction. <laughs> oh, mercy. Right, head to the left again. Now you should be pretty much free of any enemies. So we're going back past this switch. 
And all we're doing is keeping on heading up now. So for this section, it's very easy, but we do have to do something a little bit quick. Not this part, so we interact with the console, we're going to take charge of the laser. All you've got to do is move left and sort of right on the left and right stick to get rid of the other two satellites here on the left hand and right hand side. Or hit the two buttons as it were, sorry. So hit the two buttons just underneath the satellites. Now immediately go to the left, well as soon as this drops down we need to pick up one of the energy tube things. And then go to the left and interact with the hatch. That will stop a robot shooting yard dead. So, like a chandelier, it takes very slow to come down and bop you on the head so you can sue the rich people. I'm just joking, although in this day and age where gas bills are the way they are, we're going to have to sue some rich people, sorry. Um, <laughs> I'm not rich doing this, so don't worry about that. Right, immediately then, when the scene ends, immediately go behind you, interact with the hatch, and that will uh, basically... I think he shoot himself. Either way, he's not going to shoot you, which is exactly what we want. In fact, he doesn't shoot himself, but we can just drop off the ledge like Elm's King Bar. Right, this is another time section, so immediately go over to your left, pick up the item here on the left, then go directly in front of you, sort of going up. Try and run as fast as you can. You can't catch me. I'm the gingerbread man. Pick up the next item. And then go down to the vent or the grate. And then interact with that. And then we will automatically jump down. Press the A button a couple of times on it. It can get a bit finicky. So press the A button a few times. And then we should be at uh, three times. I think you have to do that. And then we will be able to jump down. So no death for us, baby. Right. But there is not going to be any more death for us. So keep heading straight for the time being. You're going to see three big doors that we can interact with and open. So what we're going to do then is interact with all three. Uh, it says level 12 here. We've been on level 12 for quite a while. So interact with all three um, consoles or buttons. And what you're going to see then is that the middle one is just not going to work. So you can interact with the two of them. Oh, in fact, we interact with the third one. In fact, yes, there's four, sorry. So four total. So we need to interact with all four. And we're going to see that the second one won't open. So what you need to do then is head all the way back down to the starting area. Basically in the junk in your trunk and house and trousen. And then what you need to do, there are like little yellow tubes that you need to kick open. I'm not sure if it's in a random order or what, but just kick this one, kick the next one to the left of you, and then kick the third one to the left of you as well. I think you need to kick them all in order to get the ray gun to appear. Now, once it appeared, we can run back to, and we've grabbed it, of course, we can run back to the main area. And now we need to interact with the one console that was just a little sticky. Somebody's put their sticky, sticky, yum, yum, jam, jam, finger, finger in there. Uh, but anyway, that opens up and that now is all good. What we can do from here is, well, nothing. We just wait for all of the satellite things to turn around. And that is going to enable us to catch the next tram and then wait for a few minutes while we just... 
Uh, enjoy. You need to interact with it to get on it, but uh, there's nothing left to do for two minutes while the cutscene plays out. Just enjoy the surroundings of death and nothingness. boys and girls so few things oh, I keep saying that few things we have to do um, in this area apparition of ghost child will appear and then disappear there is going to be a very easily very easily miserable achievement here and another one that we have to do on our first try uh, but again don't worry about that it's it's literally just putting pictures in order that's all so for this first part then what we're gonna do um, we need to basically go from Go to each ring and then press the A button when we're in each ring, as in biggest to smallest. So obviously I'll tell you exactly which order it's going to go in now. So first of all, go straight, so it's basically to the sort of bottom right, to the top right. Right here where I'm standing now, as soon as it appears, press the A button and you will throw that. Because um, we, again, we're trying to get into the Earth Sphincter. Head directly behind you and it is this ring right here, so as soon as the ring appears, press the um, A button again. Once that happens... Go sort of to the top left, and this is the ring that we need it in. So again, we need to be tickling the sphincter bags of life in order to get through. Um, <laughs> oof, nice. Go directly behind you for the next biggest one. There's only two left, so it should be obvious which it is, right in the middle. And then, of course, the smallest one left, which is just to the right of that. And that is how we get into the crustacean of Earth's crusty butt crack. So, after this, there is going to be the fifth and final memory, the fifth final photograph, which will get us the five good times achievement. I'm sure you had a lot more than five good times, but, um, well, they're the only photographs we found. It's going to be right in front of us here, right on this walkway, so, again, remember to pick it up before moving on, and the five good times achievement should unlock. And that is job done, my little huns. Now, if you want to double check as well, we've only got four achievements left. Two missables and two story-related ones. And the first missable, which is very easily missable in the world, is the Nerds Behind achievement. So, head to the right first, and what you're going to see is a robot who needs, like, a computer chip in him. Uh, so, after you interact with this, um, actually, obviously, the robot will perk up, but he does need a computer chip to start doing stuff. So, have a look at the instructions just to him. And that's, uh, ro <laughs> Robo. Robo. Oh, they're going to think we're a robosexual. That's a bender from Futurama quote, by the way, so I'm not robophobic or anything. robo sexual partners. Right, so what are we going to do? Head to the right, ignoring all the um, desktops and the computers and everything for now. I love a good robo. So, head down the steps. Again, these are ones that you can easily fall off, so again, just be very, very careful. Jump. Otherwise, you'll be falling to your death. Uh, go down these stairs, go down the next set of stairs, and that will, um, well, when we interact with this console here, what that's going to do is get rid of the set of lasers that were just in front of us. So now head up again, take your time if you uh, <laughs> accidentally keep falling or whatever. 
So now that the lasers are out, we can go forward. Make sure to interact with this rope right here as well. That's going to smash the computer down. That's what's got the computer chip in it, by the way. Oh, didn't you know that? So keep going straight. What we need to do then is just jump across once in order to um, pop the knife down. So run, jump, hop and skip, but don't fall to your death because then you'll look like shit. So now we can carefully jump down, grab the knife that we just dropped off, head back up to the old stair bag and housings. And we're going to go the opposite end of these stairs. So keep going straight and then just go down these stairs right here. Now we need to cut the rope. There it is. That is now going to open up the computer, smash it open to get us the computer chip. So what we can then do is just head down the next obvious couple of flights of stairs to grab that. There we go, Lady Gaga. Yes, I like Lady Gaga. What's it to you? Uh, right, now we're just going to head back up all the way flights of stairs. We're now going back into the main part, the main sort of computer room, or the main room as it were. So head down up to the right, and then of course you need to go up the stairs. Remember to do the big jump as well. Right, here we go then. So let's get this done. This is basically coming up to... We're going to be coming up to the end of the game now. We are very, very close now. Uh, so interact now with the robot. Now, what you need to do in order to get three pods to appear, we need to, in a sp particular order, choose some um, um, computers. So directly where the robot was, to the left of him, um, press the A button on this circle. So you've got to make sure it's the circle. Now what's going to happen is the robot is going to go to that one. So we need to go to... The opposite side is the next circle one, but we need to wait until the computer or the robot is interacting with the computer and that the orange, um, there's an orange line on the floor. So that the orange wire is glowing on the floor. There it is. Or you hear, it's like a little chime sound as it were. So then you can interact with him when the robot gets there. Just to the right of us then is the next one, which is the triangle. So again, press the A button on here. If you want to, just wait until the robot is here and you can actually start seeing him... Um, interacting with the computer. Probably easier to do that so you know where to go. So, there he comes. Thank you, Mr. Robot. Head up to the next one to the right. Press the A button. That'll get the next orange sequence going. ta -da. Right, and the final one, which is the square, is all the way past the circle and up to the left-hand side. So... What are you going to see? But they're in quite close proximity as well. Now, the nerds behind achievement, you have to do those three pods in a particular order, which of course I will show you right now, or when we get the square one lit up. So there's the square computer, so light that up, and then just go behind this big supercomputer bunch of pipes things. Again, wait until the robot is at the square computer as soon as he is and he starts typing. That's your cue to go. Right then, so for this very easily missable achievement, you just have to do these uh, three, go into these three tubes in a particular order. First of all, it's going to be triangle. You'll come out in the square, but you ne now need to go into the circle one. So it's triangle, circle, and then square. So it's triangle, circle, square. And then finally, it's going to be triangle. And that'll put you in the developer's room, and it will get you the nerds behind achievement. There it is. So there's nothing to look at here. It's just um, what I assume is. It looks like a very uh, small cramped room, but this is what it looked like, how they were working on it. So once this is done, we can now head back out. Now we've just got one more missable achievement, which is coming up very soon. Um, we're all dressed up. We're all good to go. Right. So what we need to do then, go across here, and this is automatically going to come down. Now, you need to do this in the correct sequence. So again, just moving the left stick and then pressing the A button. But of course, I will show you exactly and tell you exactly 
which ones they are. So sit your buns down in that seat, boy. Or slash girl. Now, you're going to see the pictures just to the right on the... Well, just to the up, sort of up on the screen. The first picture that we need to interact with is the one with the down arrow. To basically put the pod down. So that is the one. So... So this is the first picture then. The one with the uh, arrow going down. That is going to be the first picture to interact with. Next up is going to be the one with the up arrow. Now, once you've done a sequence, it'll show red. This is the one, not with the fire at the bottom of the thrusters. It's the one with the up arrow at the very bottom of the screen. That will be that one next. The next one will be the rocket with the um, fire. Just at the bottom there of the picture. Again, like I said, ones that you've already done will be in red, so don't worry about that. But it is the one with the uh, thrusters, the fire in the thrusters. And then the last one will be the stopwatch. There it is. That is what's going to get us the Quantum Engineer achievement. And the final two achievements in the game are story related, so we can now breathe a collective sigh of relief. Hey, nobody breathes sighs of relief like that, but that, that's what I imagine if everyone done it all at once. Anyway, couple of minute cutscene now, so just enjoy yourself. Knowing that we are pretty much now at the end. Ta-da. Right, so this is the very, very final level of the game. It's not very long, but it is just basically a platforming. It's just one big platforming section, which should only take a couple of minutes to do, um, but it's not too bad. We will get the Event Horizon achievement. Um, the only thing, I'm, I'm not going to talk uh, at all through this. It's You're going pretty much straight forward, and you're just jumping on platforms. Now, for me, what I, ended up ke I kept doing, I kept jumping and putting my left stick to the right, which was making me fall off to the right all the time. 
So it looks like you should need to be jumping to the right, but all you need to basically be doing is putting your left stick sort of up and ever so slightly to the right, that's all. For some reason, it confused the crap out of me. I, I kept thinking we were walking to the right when it's not that. You need to put the left stick up, maybe slightly to the right, and that's it. And this will be the end of the game. So just keep on spamming. You don't actually have to hit every single lit up square. Um, but just platform your buns all the way up to the Huns. And we will drink the gods of the rums. Which is... Dot, dot, dot. We've done it. We've done it. You've done it. You goddamn legendary son of a monkeys. You did it. So that's it. Singularity. That is the plain effect. Now there's going to be a couple of minute cutscene here. Very heartwarming. Very touching. Is it a happy ending or is it a sad? Well, find out for yourself. But you should now be on 33 out of 33 achievements. So I'm going to leave it here, guys and gals. So thank you so, so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the game. I hope you enjoyed the guide and that it helped as well. If it did, of course, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share with a friend as well. Big shout out to everyone who continues to support the channel on Patreons, all old ones and my newly new ones. Really, really do appreciate it. Thank you so much. And that'll be that then, guys and gals. So I do hope this game goes on the Game Pass soon. And if it's already on Game Pass, then hey, I'm glad it's on Game Pass right now. Oh, it's my family, so they weren't deceased after all. Yeah, anyway, that's that, guys and gals, from me. I'll see you in the next one. Hell of a walk on the Slenderman, by the way. Shoulders like boulders, broski. Uh, sorry. Big love, everyone. Catch you in the next one. that why do video games do that why why do they do that and if you go through all of that you deserve you deserve a happy ending instead he dies in space grand anyway goodbye